Hello everybody and welcome. I thought I'd just show you some of the pots that we've had out of the kiln and give you an update on some of my um, some of my disasters and um, <laughs> we always get a few a few disasters don't we well I wouldn't say I had any really cataclysmic disasters but I had some things that I was really not happy about uh, in this last firing having said that I was also uh, pleased about some other things that came as a result of the firing always when you fire your kiln for the first time after you haven't fired for a little while you there's a rather sort of sharp learning curve you have to go through again and um, and that's why it's good to have like sequential firing where you can learn from one firing to the next what you what what you did wrong and how you can improve on it etc um, anyway I just thought I'd just show you some of these these pots that came out this is just a selection of some of them um, and we'll just talk about them a, a little bit without going into too much too much detail I want to show you uh, here down on this this end here I've got some bowls you can see now these are bowls which usually come out much nicer than these um, these are some ordinary pouring bowls that I usually spray wood ash on the outside but I didn't spray wood ash on these partly as an experiment to see what they would come out like without any wood ash in fact I think there's one or two here that may have a bit of wood ash on yeah I mean you can see the difference what a bit of wood ash does basically this kiln firing this kiln firing actually was not reduced was not reduced enough so I had a, a basic problem with of oxidization there's a classic oxidized type of celadon glaze which is this rather unattractive pea green color which I don't like um, It should be a much bluer, bluey. Some of these uh, little colanders that we made uh, also come out rather dull looking, not very attractive. Um, the glaze inside has taken on the color of the clay body, which is rather gray. And it hasn't, it doesn't have a, the liveliness about it that I had hoped. Again, no sprayed wood ash. So I don't think I'm going to be doing any unglazed exterior or naked clay without any wood ash again, uh, not with this clay body. I was hoping for a better result, but my result was slightly impaired by the fact that the reduction was not I think if it had been more reduced, these would have been more toasty looking. So that was a big disappointment to me. However, um, as I said, it's a learning curve experience, isn't it? This, this was a glaze that I had not had used before. This is called a leech white. Um, after my grandfather, I imagine. Leech. <laughs> leech white. Um, it's basically a clear, a clear glaze to which a little bit of zirconium is added, or zircopax, which makes it rather white. And I didn't want it to be really as white as this. This is a little bit too, a little bit too stark, in actual fact. So again, but you know, I only made up a very small, a very small amount of it, just as a test. Uh, so the next batch of that I make up will not have as much of that zir zircopax in it. So that was that. Here we have, again you can see here, this is a bit more toasty, isn't it? This clay body, or should I say a little bit more reduced in the kiln. And this had a temuku glaze on the inside, which has worked quite nicely. 
with an ilmenite decoration down at the bottom which is done with a brush so I did I did a few of those just as a as a test and they and they work quite well so I was happy I was happy with the result because I'd not tested I'd not tested ilmenite on top of um, temiku and you want to use the, the ilmenite that it's very fine very fine ilmenite ilmenite can come in different in different um, it can come very coarse rather granular or it can come finer okay uh, I was also testing out my co my cobalt you see because the cobalt that I was using uh, actually this is a mixture of cobalt with iron oxide and manganese and rather blue rather too blue I prefer a darker a darker more slate slate blue I did a wax resist decoration I was just playing around I did a few of these just to and then I brushed the with a broad brush I brushed on the banding wheel on top of the wax resist to give us that decoration kind of a little bit too busy really I think for me really now, now I'm looking at it now I'm thinking no 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 <laughs> oh dear oh dear oh dear <laughs> okay let's move along that's all right I have to show you there's no point in me just showing you pots that I think are fantastic pots. You need to see some pots that are really crap, pardon my French, but if you know what I mean. Now we have, have some pots here. Um, this was a the 50% red clay and 50% wood ash, unwashed wood ash. Kind of, kind of comes out quite pleasing. This comes out rather yellow because this clay body actually doesn't have very much iron in it so it tends to make a rather yellow a, t a rather yellow result you notice the scrofito type of uh, decoration through uh, which I did on the clay body when it was like leather hard and these were raw fired these were no 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 I tell a lie I beg your pardon they were not raw fired these these were bisque but then I put the, this glaze on the top you know the, the thing about the thing about this glaze is it's rather thin it's a rather thin glaze and it, it's not very kind of buttery you know it doesn't have much sort of nice body to it so any kind of decoration that you do under glaze decoration it tends to show through very 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 readily um, any scratching that you do whatever you happen to do this glaze does not have very much body so whatever you do stands out very well and it's good for that it's kind of uh, I'm it's giving me the feeling though it's a little bit too thin there's not any it's almost like just the naked clay with a colorant over it you know it's very very I can feel the clay through the through the glaze very readily Um, this is the, the glaze. Actually, I call it crocodile, but it hasn't come out very crocodile-y on this clay body. As I say, because it doesn't have very much iron in it, it tends to run a bit like this, which can can be quite quite nice. Okay, that's those jugs that were with that glaze. But then I did some some jugs in Temaku. Um, and the Temaku was behaving very nicely, as you can see, breaking just over the decoration. And that's what the what I want to achieve with Temaku is basically to have a black, a kind of black background, but where you have a decoration or a sharp edge, 
it will break on the high points, you see? You see what's happened there? How the temiku breaks on the high points. So that was quite that was quite handsome. This one here, you'll notice, um, I put ilmenite on this one and I did little fl flex. But the problem with ilmenite, or not the problem, or one of the characteristics of ilmenite is it tends to fuzz out, bleed out rather. So what I did got rather lost. However, you can see there's a rather um, interesting color uh, colors appearing here in the in the glaze. This particular one, I forgot to clean it. <laughs> I forgot to clean this one. I knew there was one that was dirty, and I, but when I came to putting them in the kiln, I forgot all about it. And luckily, it didn't stick really. But uh, so. This was one I did, which actually I, I, I tried to facet it. And you can see how the Temuku glaze is broken on the high points of the facet, of the facets. Rather loose facet faceting in that case. Again, another one with, with the Ilmenite. Quite a powerful decorating pigment to use on top of, on top of Temaku. And then we had this one, which was rather nice. This one, um, again, ilmenite dots on top of Temaku, but then this was dipped in, just the top here, was dipped in Nuka, Nuka glaze, which has given this rather nice pale, slightly bluey in places. Nuka glaze is, is a, a, a glaze that was originally from Japan, I believe. It was made out of rice, the hull, the, the husks of, of, of rice. They burned them and then they, the, 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 uh, the, wood, the ash that was left, they made into a glaze, combining it with other ingredients. This is not that. This is just wood ash and felspar and flint. That's Nuka. That's 33% 30, wood ash, 33% um, flint, and 33% felspar. Very simple, just a third each. It works quite well on top of Temaku, I, th I think you'll agree. So that was that. Again here, this is a bottle in Temaku with, again, just a top dipped in Nuka. Um... Again, the, the facets on this bottle breaking, it breaking very nicely there. I don't know whether you can, whether you can see it in this, in this, in this one, but this particular Temaku tends to get a rather sugary, a bit what, what they call orange, orange peel. So I, th I don't know if you can see that. Let me just see if we can adjust the focus on the camera here. Bring it in a touch. Can you see on the shoulder of the pot there, it's got a, like a, a resemble, resembling orange peel. It's a sort of, it's something that doesn't always, it doesn't always doesn't always materialize but it, it can it can be a very attractive type of feature I'm told it's sought after I I, I tend to I seem to have just got lucky with this glaze recipe it, it seems to it seems to it, at a certain thickness it tends to it tends to happen rather readily which is quite nice so there's that this is a small Shino bottle you saw me making some of these. I'm really not very well up on chinos, I have to admit, and I'm learning my way. But I did, in fact, put some wax on top because it's something to do with the migration of the soda ash. 
in the glaze. But if you put the wax on top, it stops it coming to the surface, I believe. But I don't think I did it at the right time. I think I, I should have done it earlier while it was still not properly dried out. This was... But anyway, as I say, learning curve. Ha <laughs> ha! A bit further over here, we had some pestles and mortars that, you know, they came out reasonably well, except that some of them I didn't put wood ash on. Like this one doesn't have any wood ash on. And you can see it's rather stony looking. What else can I show you? Let's just move this this tripod down a touch. Oh yes. I did a, a series of, of mugs. Uh, straightforward mugs with um, straightforward mugs with, with the leech white with a, a cobalt decoration and then this red dot which I've got which is a mixture I got from Spain I had it made up in a laboratory there it's like a high temperature red in this case I didn't put it quite enough of it and it's come out like a high temperature pink <laughs> anyway um, again the, the the leech white a little bit stark for my taste a little bit too white a little bit too clean looking almost look, looks a little bit too industrial doesn't it cheers <laughs> having said that they you know they all fired very well when you've made your pots what you want to do is grind off the bottoms you'll notice the bottom of this pot is not trimmed okay in any way there's no trimming as I say these are these are just simply thrown sticked off and then thumbed off and that's it no more no fuss okay so anyway uh, again some of these little incised pots that I you may have seen me do I think I was, I was putting the uh, the incised and then what's the word when you when you put another glaze into the uh, sorry another clay body into a, a lighter colored buff colored st stoneware body into into there so again these though I was trying to emulate something that I'd done in Spain before with a different clay body that was um, a much browner, nicer effect. This is rather stony looking, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll live with it a little while, and then we'll we'll um, we'll come back to we'll come back to it. Maybe with a different with a different um, with a different opinion. And that's. And that's very much the case, isn't it? Sometimes you have to live with pots a little bit. The, the first time that when, when pots come out of the kiln, the trouble is you're having to de deal with, um, you've got your own preconceived ideas of how you think the pot is going to come out. The pot doesn't necessarily come out that way. So what, what is going to be our reaction? Is our reaction going to be, oh, because it just didn't, didn't instantaneously satisfy us because it disappointed us in some way well there are there are disappointments but I tell you I had many pots that come out of the kiln and then I I just put them to one side and I sort of just mulled them over you know put them on the back burner and then they they suddenly the pots they, they grow on you there's something about the pot that you begin to you be begin to develop an appreciation for Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. So, finally, <laughs> uh, 
Um, although this 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 kiln was a rather a, mi a mixed a mixed batch a mixed batch of, of, of different results. Finally, I, I got I got one result though that I was really uh, really pleased about. Just hang on here one second. You remember I told you about this clay that I went and dug at that, that clay pit locally, just here. Remember this clay? I think we threw some on the wheel, did we? I talked about it anyway. This is clay I went and dug myself and we talked about it at the time. Um, but I hadn't had opportunity to fire any until this kiln. Um, and I'm going to show you the result. Just a minute. I want to keep that open. I want to show you the result because it's interesting. That's it. That's the clay in its naked, in its naked virgin self, as it were, dug out of the ground and... Uh, I put it through a sieve, I cleaned out the s rocks and stones and bits of dirt, etc. And I, I thought I'd fire some in the kiln, so I made a little pot. We bisque fired it, and I just put a li the, the, the little pot that I'd made into this glaze firing, and we fired it up to cone, cone 10. Cone 10, I'll show you the cone. So, cone 10, and there's the pot, what do you make of that? There he is, I interesting interesting though how this pot completely withstood cone 10 and what a, a dark color so so that was something that made me very happy <laughs> I don't know what I use it for, maybe a thimble. <laughs> but anyway, the clay is refractory up to stoneware temperature. I'm getting it all dirty with fingerprints now. But, um, so that's an exciting find and I'm gonna be working more with that. So there we have it. We could say a bit of a mixed bag of results, but also some some very positive th results. I was pleased with the Temaku. I was pleased with um, the, the Nuka on top of the Temaku. Um, the leech white, I'm learning about that, a little less zirco packed in that, not quite so stark. I think the results might have been d better altogether, though, if, if the kiln was a little bit more reduced and not quite so oxidized. Here's a nice little pot that would have would have come out better if this had been a bluey, more bluey green instead of this rather yellow green. Very typical oxidized type of celadon. Okay, well there we are.
Anyway, folks. Um, keep practicing. That's the secret. And, and when you get a bad firing, you don't give up. You think, okay, we have to learn here. Or what do we... So make some notes. Make some notes of your your results and and the next time when you come to glazing you're going to look at your notes and you're going to think oh yeah that's right okay so la di da di da <laughs> okay we'll see you bye bye